Hi, I'm Wilhelmina Grant. I'm a found object artist. I do primarily assemblages and collages. Um, I just started doing some work with encaustic wax, hot wax. I do a little photography and I just published my first book. I was born in Brooklyn, but I have been living in Harlem for the past 20 years. And I own property in Harlem, so I think I qualify as a Harlemite. Um, transplanted. So um, yes, I'm from Harlem by way of Brooklyn. I started doing art projects about eight years ago after I lost my job. Um, as a part of filling some time, I had someone show me how to start making assemblages and it worked out very well that that medium is good for me because using found objects, I was just taking whatever I could find from around the house or uh, on the street, clean garbage, and turned it into something other than what it started out to be. Well, I'm inspired by the fact that there are so many items that are of a different type, let's say uh, so many items like a hot comb, for instance, that we used at one time that are not really in popular use anymore. So I preserve these items, put them into art, and some people who know what it is can appreciate it. So things like um, things made of metal in particular that are no longer made, uh, that have been replaced by plastics or uh, other synthetics, I try to preserve some of those things from our culture and from our history. And uh, making art with them is one way to ensure that they would never be destroyed. Well, some of the well-known artists such as um, Betty Saar is a big inspiration for me. Um, any and all of the assemblage artists are inspiration for me because of what they've done with throwaways um, and uh, disposable items and turn them into a political statement or turn them into something beautiful, uh, essentially uh, garbage, so to speak and they've turned it around to tell a story with it. Um, Betty Saar is one of the main ones that I can think of at the moment, um, but a lot of the assemblage artists or folk artists uh, are an inspiration to me. Well, I try to learn something new and add on to what I've learned uh, because I'm teaching other people now. I teach, uh, I, I help guide senior uh, citizens through, in some instances, their first artistic process in decades. So I'm always teaching myself new techniques so that I can uh, help them discover their creativity and um, artistry. So I'm always, always learning new techniques, going to workshops myself or reading up on other artists or visiting other artist studios, going to other art shows and mingling uh, with artists, rubbing elbows with them at art exhibitions or art uh, groups. And that helps me keep it fresh and helps me keep learning. So for me, um, I try to incorporate messages in some of my art that has to do with uh, spreading early detection uh, of uh, spreading awareness of early detection of breast cancer because I'm a two-time survivor um, with 22 years of survivorship under my belt and I think it's an important thing for people to understand and also to know that there is a large disparity in survival rates in the communities of color and underserved populations so I've made quite a lot of art that brings out that point and that brings people's attention to uh, survivorship and early detection. My, my favorites change from moment to moment. Uh, when I finish a piece, that becomes my immediate favorite. But I've, I've had so many favorites, and actually some of my most favorite pieces have been purchased by collectors, so they're no longer here. But uh, my current favorite is this fish piece, and it was made by um, putting together uh, an old ice cube tray 
and the inside of a steam iron and uh, a spatula for the tail. And this was what I was mentioning to you before, some of the things that are no longer found um, in use because that's been replaced by plastic or, or ice cubes now come out of the door of the refrigerator. So um, some people younger than myself may not even know what that is. Yeah. Yes, and I think that was one of my early pieces. I did that one in 2009, I believe. And uh, the, the 50 nipples represent the 50 states of the United States. Some of them are missing. As a matter of fact, exactly two of them are missing. They represent breasts. Um, and you see how I have a statement below that says, win the war on breast cancer. And there's a little boxing glove, uh, leave Iraq. And that was in the news quite a lot that year. And in between, uh, I use a lot of time pieces in my work. And, and there is a little, uh, watch head that actually I'm assuming they're real diamonds because on the back it's it's numbered and it says Cartier <laughs> and I didn't know what that was when I put it there and then I realized I said maybe that's a real diamond watch but then that really drives home the point even more because I'm talking about um, how we really need a cure for breast cancer and so much money is being spent on militarism and war and so it really probably belongs there which I have a setup for encaustic and uh, I uh, enjoy, I have enjoyed starting to learn that it's a, it's a process and it involves a lot of patience and a lot of ventilation. So I don't do it that often, but I, I do enjoy working with wax. Well, they enjoy seeing what I've done. I don't exactly do the work on this level with them because it requires uh, a lot of um, heavy uh, tools, saws and, and um, drills and things like that. So I don't use that with them, but they have seen my work and they're interested in it. And I might do a, a basic type of assemblage with them such as this, where they can easily attach with some very strong glue um, images onto blocks of wood, for example, and th where they don't need to use a drill or a hammer or anything where they might um, sustain some kind of injury. I'm not trying to go there. I, I would like to be featured in a museum. That's what I, well actually my work has been in a museum once, the African American Museum in Dallas, Texas, but I want my work to be featured or something, maybe a collection or maybe a part of a collection or something to be um, featured in a museum. And um, I wanted my work to appear in a book, so I wrote my own book and I have a lot of my, uh, 40 pieces of my art in my book that tells my story about how my breast cancer experience connects with my arts experience. So um, that's one milestone that I crossed this year and I'm, I'm happy to have been able to do that. Um, other than that, hmm, um, what's next, a movie? <laughs>